just didn't make sense. Why would he pick a homeless person? Once the money had been touched by dirty hands, he wouldn't have wanted it. Maybe he's telling us that money itself is dirty. You sure it's one man? Yeah. And he's mine. I don't know, maybe he was trying to get rid of something unclean. And at the same time, he's making it perfectly clear to us that he's not afraid to take lives. This damn thing was detonated by some kind of remote control device. Boom. Twist in the wire. It's the same. Hi. Hi. Um, the victim was a street regular. A panhandler they called Carl Moss. Grace found this in his back pocket. All in one piece, if you can believe it. The money was inside the plastic? Yep, hundred bucks. We paid him. To test us. How's Grace? Running on adrenaline. I don't know. I've excluded the employee with the munitions experience. It was a two-week course in Army basic training. The other employees check out as well. You didn't sleep last night. That leaves us nowhere, Bailey, and he's going to make another demand. You think we'll hear today? We might. I think he's beginning to operate at an accelerated pace. I mean, he got our attention by blowing up the money and killing Carl Moss. He must have had a reason. Some doomsday thing? Maybe. When he contacts us again, I think we should go along with whatever he wants. Within reason. I I'm just saying, let's enter his game. He's been fairly controlled in what he's done so far. I don't think that he wanted to kill anyone. I think that he felt he had to, to show how serious he was. Well, that doesn't make me want to trust him, Sam. Well, don't get me wrong, Bailey, I don't trust him. I just think that he's so focused on his mission that nothing else matters. Now, Grace is part of his mission. I know, but he likes Grace. I think he trusts that she's uncontaminated. I don't think he'll hurt her. We got nothing from the canvas. No prints on the money. No trace materials off the bombs. And no one saw anything. He's good. It's about dirt. Cleanliness is a big thing for this guy. Might be a reckless uh, Howard Hughes gotta be. What's happening with the lawsuits? Mm. Ugly stuff. People from the surrounding neighborhoods blame the power plant for a cluster of birth defects and a high percentage of cancer among 30 to 50 year olds. Concentrate on males diagnosed or males with relatives diagnosed. That might be why he's so angry. In his letter yesterday, he talked about planet R seeing the Earth, which he hates, which he thinks is dirty now. Do you think that that could be an astronomical reference? Maybe a, another planet? Found this guy upstairs. Said he's got a breakfast meeting with you. Hi. Yeah. Uh, just give me a minute. Okay, the uh, part about the meeting was a flat-out lie, but the breakfast part was more like wishful thinking. You want to do it? Look, in the middle of the case, You're not going to tell me you don't eat breakfast. I chew with my mouth closed, use a napkin, usually don't even stick my gum under the table. I don't even know if you're married. If I were married, would I be asking you out? <laughs> I'm not married. I'm hungry. And you're saying no? I'm saying I need to work. I was just going to my office. Oh, okay. I'll just grab something from the vending machine and uh, keep you company. Okay. Look at this. Look. This is from the Venus probe. Now, look, right here in the middle, it's a new star series. It was uh, discovered by the astronomer Louis Besicini, and he named it Quadrant R for his daughter Rita. Quadrant R? Mm -hmm. So you think Planet R is for real? Hmm. To him, maybe. Hmm. I mean, space is clean, unpolluted. So, if you were to discover a star, what would you name it? I don't know, um, hope, maybe? Something like that? It's nice. What about you?
I name it Sam. Oh, you would. Yeah. You really don't hold anything back, do you? No, I pretty much say what's on my mind. Oh. You want to say what's on your mind? Well, it's sort of complicated. Yeah, I can tell. I like it complicated. Well, I was married. Um, my husband died three years ago. What happened? Do you want to save it for our second date? Yeah. <sighs> okay, I'm sorry. I do have a daughter, though. Her name is Chloe. She's seven. She's a pistol. Cool. What about you? Me? Well, I um, get headaches if my blood sugar <sighs> drops. No, seriously, I, I turn into a complete drought. <laughs> I'm working on it, but, you know. I have a couple of mutts, Bob and Ray. Just took out a second mortgage on my house to pay for a ski boat. I'm kind of a slob, but my toolbox, I keep that very well organized. Those are your wild stats. Yeah. I think you left a couple of things out. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I was married to once, lasted three years. No kids. That was her choice, not mine. And I think Chloe is a beautiful name. So where do you want to go on our second date? Sam, we need you in the command center. I'm gonna have to get back to Emma. End is near. Planet R will reign in unspoiled sovereignty. Send sterile brunette 3 p.m. 8729 Mott $2 million dollars. Sterile brunette drives alone. He broke into a satellite TV feed. You still got the hots for Grace. Can you just send flowers? Now he wants two million? Blow that up too? Can't wait to see the memo on this request. So where do we start? By doing what he says. Well, ultimately it is your call, Grace. I think he likes you. I think he trusts you. I don't think he'll hurt you. We don't have a choice. We'll sweep the car, track you from the air. John, you and I will tailor from a couple of miles behind. That's not what he told us to do. I don't give a damn. Grace is not going to 